Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us for yet another drawing program. My name is Lynn. I work for the San Mateo County Library Systems. I'm usually at the Belmont branch, but at this point, you may recognize my face mostly from the art programs that we've been doing online. And I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. My name is Debbie Huey, and I work at the Millbrae Library. And thanks again for joining us for another gripping episode of How to Draw Anything. Um, before we get started, just want to do our little spiels in the beginning. You know, this is just one program um, of many programs that we have um, on smcl.org on this YouTube channel. Um, just be sure to go to this website to check out the whole schedule of events. Um, later on, even this afternoon at uh, three o'clock. Is it three o'clock? Yeah, three o'clock. We have open labs with Ricardo. Mm, it should be fun. Yeah, it should be fun. And then also for all you parents out there and adults, um, if you haven't signed, um, if you haven't filled out your census form, make sure you do that um, at my2020census.gov. That's the website you, uh, you got to go to. It only takes a few minutes. You did yours, right, Lynn? I believe so. Okay. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> My dad took care of it, so uh, yeah. I'm trusting that he did it. <laughs> well, it doesn't take much time, so just be sure to do that um, because you want to make sure to get counted. Um, you're securing funds for health care, for schools, for housing, a lot of important things that, um, that matter to our community. My2020census.gov. All right, so let's get started with our program today. Um, and we're going to do a little bit more of our doodling um, with mm -hmm. characters. And so on, oh, actually, first of all, I have to remind you of um, all the materials that you need to, um, to participate in our program. So first of all, you're going to need a sheet of paper or more than one sheet of paper if you want. And then you have you to, fancy. Yes, exactly. Or uh, if, yeah, if you have a digital tablet too, that works too. Um, then you've got your pens, markers, pencils. Actually, you start with your pencil first if you want to kind of play along with what we do. And then you're going to bring out your markers and your, and your crayons later on. So let's get drawing. You ready, Lynn? All right. So I, uh, as, as always, I'm going to be drawing on my iPad just to, for ease of showing you what I'm um, drawing. So let me get my screen ready for you guys. Yeah, we got a couple drawing games lined up today, don't we? Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's learn how to draw anything. Yay! We need, we're going to need a theme song at some point. <laughs> <laughs> We've been on long enough. I feel like we deserve our own opening number. <laughs> <It's> true, right? <laughs> All right. So everybody grab your pencils. I'm going to grab my digital pencil. And we're going to just start again with just like kind of doing some random shapes. And then we're going to be uh, kind of inspired by whatever shapes we see. Um, this is very much like, you know, looking at when you look up in the sky and you look at clouds and you um, see some sort of object in, in those clouds and everybody sees something different. Um, I, I might see something different than Lynn sees. And I'm just kind of just scribbling some lines. Oh, we got some interesting ones going. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just kind of working with whatever. Mm. So, yeah, I, think, I, I don't know what I'm going for here today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see anything? Are you inspired by any of these shapes so far? Uh, I'm thinking. I see something in the upper right corner. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see what I'm working, what I'm thinking about? I am curious. I feel like what I'm almost seeing right now is like one of those long necked dinosaurs. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, is the head like over here? Yeah. Oh, that's not what I was going for. Ooh, I'm interested in what you were going for. Let's see. It's already very different. <laughs> It is very different because I see my eyes are over here. Uh-huh. You're looking rather spooked. A little bit. A little, oh, another angry spooked. A little, oh, yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'm going to just make his mouth a little 
<laughs> Little ragged. I'm kind of seeing like some sort of like jellyfish. Ah. I'm seeing. So I'm going to do some erasing mm -hmm. just to kind of nice. enhance the jellyfish a little bit. I'm going to erase this. You know, we're just kind of getting inspired by the, the little <laughs> scribbles that we do. So it's okay if we're not, you know, following the scribbles to a T. We're just kind of being inspired by them. But this is what this is what I saw. So kind of like grumpy jellyfish. <laughs> 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 kind of weird, huh? And mm. Is, a king <laughs> is it king jellyfish? <laughs> yes. King jelly blob. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's that's one. Mm. Do you see anything in these two shapes here? These two yes. doodles. Well, the cross hatching. I'm going back and forth between whether it makes me think of a patchwork quilt or like mm. a chessboard. Oh yeah. I was kind of thinking of baskets, but mm. but I kind of like your patchwork quilt idea. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna actually, you know what kind of reminds me of too is a picnic blanket. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was almost going to have a picnic on my lawn. No, for lunch. It's been very nice weather. <laughs> very nice weather. Um, it's like we went from cold and dreary to suddenly like solid 70s. And it's like, ah, yes. I want to be outside. <laughs> yes. Maybe someday it, my allergies started acting up. So I was like, maybe not today, even though it was a beautiful day. Yeah, that would, that would hold you back a bit. <laughs> yeah. So there's my basket with some bread. <laughs> a baguette. <laughs> yes. Classic picnic food. Mm -hmm. mm. Picnic blanket. Like, uh, sorry, mm. picnic blanket. <laughs> okay, we can always develop this more if we want. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about this shape? Mm. Do you see anything? I almost see a whale. <gasps> Is the like if the top of the drawing is the tail and then it oh, curves into the head? I see it. It's it's a very blobby whale, I which like may be in theme with our blobby king jelly. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Oops, hold on. Let me try to enhance the whale tail. Is this what you're mm -hmm. thinking? Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, I see it. I like how we always see something different. Mm -hmm. was, what were you seeing for this one? I was seeing kind of, well, if I were to do it, it, it had. <laughs> you know, it's like something like that. <laughs> but I won't I like do how that. Both times we've seen the head on like the opposite you part know, of the body. You know what it looks like though when I draw this? Do you know what a sunfish is? Oh, yeah. Like a mola mola. Like it kind of <laughs> reminds me of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with the whale this time. All right. And then see if I can I don't know how to draw like one of those it's like a sperm whale right yeah I think those are kind of like the classic the one that has like a kind of more rectangular head mm -hmm. and the bit that's dipping down might be transformed into like a fin or something oh I, I think that's where it, it goes I just raised it I, tr I that's cheated. fine <laughs> Pencils are for erasing. Yes. Maybe like that? Yeah, I think that's roughly how a whale works. I should know this. I was drawing one like a month ago. Oh, I don't like that eye. The, to be fair, the one I was drawing was very highly stylized, so I wasn't really doing a proper study of whales. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got a little eye. I like how chilled out it looks. And then, yeah. He's, he's, well, he's got the whole ocean to swim in. Mm -hmm. And then, I guess that's the blowhole somewhere, mm -hmm. there, right? Yeah. 
Does it have a fin on top? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a, that could be a good segue into your... <laughs> um, we'll put a pin in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> into uh, the second part of how to draw anything using uh, reference. The one that I have wouldn't even be a good reference because it's like a s- deliberately stenciled version. Oh. Of a whale. Uh-huh. So you can't actually see anything. I don't think they have back fins. I don't <gasps> think so. You mean this? This? No, no, no. As in oh. like, kind of like how dolphins have like. Oh, the, oh, that. I don't think whales do. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> We're grown adults. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with that. <laughs> We're going to go with this whale. All right. All right. Good looking so look whale. At the, look at that. We got a, we got a sperm whale. We've got a picnic basket with some baguette, and we've got a creepy <laughs> old jellyfish. <laughs> so. I feel like there's a story being told with those three pictures together, but I'm not entirely sure what the story is. It looks like the whale wants King Jelly to join him, and the oh. King Jelly's just like, nope. No. Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone, whale. Oh. The whale has been rejected. Aww. Although whale doesn't really seem to have that strong a feeling about it. Hey, King Jelly. Actually, we don't have a name. Don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> because I think we're going to develop this guy a little Ooh, bit. Ooh, all right. If you don't mind. No, not at all. I'm inspired by this one. Mm-hmm. So we just made some, you know, rough sketches of, of our drawings here. And mm-hmm. now we're going to kind of try to make them nice and pretty, kind of polished and um, looking, you know, less sketchy, a little bit, a little bit more final. So I'm going to switch to my marker. So after, you, you know, if you guys have done, you're done doing your sketches too, you can switch over to your, your markers or whatever uh, uh, drawing tool of choice that you want to use. And you're going to just kind of start making your uh, drawing a little bit nicer. It's kind of looking like an octopus now. Oh, I don't know what a jellyfish, jellyfish tendrils look like. I think they vary pretty wildly depending on the jellyfish. Okay. It's- some have like different types of tendrils. Like I think like some have like little skinny ones alongside like more flowery. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm gonna go with that. And I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'll maybe put some. It could also be like a pseudo octopus. You're right. With lots and lots of tentacles. More than eight <laughs> tentacles. The world's most extra octopus. <laughs> Four or five. Dectopus. Oh, actually, it could be an octopus now. This is the eighth one. Eighth tentacle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. All right. (laughs) So you notice, yeah. (laughs) You notice that I wasn't tracing over my pencils exactly. Kind of looks like a mess in a way, right? Um, but you'll see. We'll we'll erase our pencils so that um you know, we can kind of see a little bit more cleaned up um, drawing. I'm going to work on his eyeballs now. He's got big (laughs) eyeballs. His face is just full of emotion. (laughs) Yes. Because he's like, this sperm whale is so annoying. I got to get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> doesn't want to acknowledge that they're friends oh poor guy it's too grumpy it goes against his image of being a grump <laughs> right he's probably a really good friend though he's probably a good friend <laughs> <laughs> okay just adding some detail I'm gonna draw his crown maybe some jewels Mm-hmm. It's fancy. It's fancy crown. Yes. And it sparkles too. <laughs> okay, so I. He think... thinks Whale only wants to be friends with him because of his crown. Aww. <laughs> Poor guy. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, you know, I've, I've done my inking to make the drawing a little bit nicer. Now I'm going to just erase. So I'm going to erase all those pencil marks that I made just so we can see what we drew. Especially all those tentacles that we drew that were kind of new. All right. And I think I it's just, fun that we kind of changed what his character was midway. Yeah, we you, know, did. you start with one thing, but as you even as you start to solidify it, you can start seeing something else and you can just go in that path instead. Right. We saw we saw this octopus. Actually, if we have an octopus, it needs those little Oh, suckers. that's right. Huh. Suckers. What did I learn at the aquarium last time that octop octopi have three hearts? you know that one? I don't. <laughs> yeah, they have like, I think it's three hearts. Oh, that's wild. And eight, is it eight brains? I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> make any false claims. It's, <laughs> misquote. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't want to misquote. <laughs> it's fascinating. Oct Oct yeah. Octopi are fascinating. They're very smart. Which is, mm -hmm. you know, that's yeah, I know they're smart. All right, so... Now, I think we're going to color this octopus. Mm, exciting. Do you have any suggestions of how to color? What mm. color this? I kind of want him to be pink. <gasps> Hot pink or uh, light pink? A little lighter, I think. How about? That looks good. Bubblegum pink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I like it. I like it. Mm. Let me see. Bubblegum bubble mm -hmm. octopus. Anything else you can think of that? Um, mm. This may think? require adding some more lines in, but I feel like if he has a crown, he should also have a royal cape. <gasps> Whoa. You mean like the one with the fur trim? Yeah. <laughs> that may be that may require more lines than yeah, you're, you're looking for right now. Let's see. How much time do we have? Uh we got about a little under 15 minutes. Okay. I think we have time. I think we can cheat it and have it be like on his side that's not showing like he's wearing it on one side let's see. <laughs> so it's just kind of trailing behind him let's see so he's got uh if i'm picturing it right <laughs> yeah okay okay and then it has fur trim on the bottom of that too <laughs> that okay so that means I gotta do some erasing and then we'll do some recoloring is it the typical um you know like the red royal red I think cape? it would look good with his bubble bu bubble glum pink <laughs> did you say red yeah okay let's go with it let's see if this works okay so back to coloring, we'll go with that nice royal red. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. fur kind of has that like those lines sometimes. I don't know what those lines are, but I'm a poor color, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. <laughs> You, everyone at home, you guys can, you can take more time to make your drawings more polished. I'm kind of rushing through. And then I'm going to color that fur. I think we can probably just erase the pink and the fur and make that. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going extra. You're actually coloring it. <laughs> I'm going to color it. I'm coloring it. It's actually a little gray. And then I'm going to add those little black lines. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's see. Am I in the 
Thanks. And that. So there's those. Ah. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I think it indicates the right thing. Like it's kind of the shadow on the underside of where the fur overlaps. And some just have like those speckles. Yeah. Yeah. Speckles. That's what I'm yeah. looking for. <laughs> speckles. Oops. And I'm gonna I feel this. like his little sucker should be a different color, but I'm oh. not sure what color. Yeah. Ooh, I like the green in the crown. How about red in there? It's got a ruby too. Okay, mm. color and suckers. Let's see. Oops. Mm. Oops. That's green. Okay. Um, darker. Darker might work. Yeah. How's that? All right, <laughs> check it out. We got a brand new character <laughs> that no one's ever seen before. Nope. Okay, now we gotta just think of a few names, possible mm -hmm. names. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, he's not, he's not a jellyfish. Okay. Even if he's an octopus, he could still be King Jelly. <laughs> That's true. You're right. Still looks a little bit like. Jelly blob. <laughs> Jelly blob. blob. <laughs> Haired royal. I, or I, I thought a royal. Grumpy. Um, the royal grump. <laughs> the royal grump. Um, Octo eight. Um, anything jumping out at that, you? I'll be honest, I kind of got attached to King Jelly early I on. Think, guess what? I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah, it's fine. We, you know, the, it, the name the name felt good, so we got to go with it, right? Yeah. All right. King Jelly it is. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! Then I'm going to finish this. King <laughs> Jelly. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Leave me alone, wow. Oh, he had a picnic with a baguette set up and everything. <laughs> All right, look at that. Cool. We just made a new character. Um, and what we could do with this new character, and especially if you at home have made a new character too, you want to maybe make a comic about him, right? Um, I kind of want to share you. Uh, oh, you guys can't see. Actually, let's do one more drawing. Oh, we don't have much time. Um, it's okay if we run over a little because yeah okay we'll do one more um we'll do one more drawing game and i'm gonna move this up here that. okay so this new drawing game um i'm going to ask you lynn um yes. we're gonna again we're gonna try to make a new character Mm -hmm. that no one has ever seen before and um you in the audience trust me lynn and i have not talked about this we have not seen any of these characters that we're drawing today this is the not first time all. i'm asking lynn some questions okay so lynn, our integrity do you, is intact <laughs> yes <laughs> so lynn do you want me to draw a uh, a human an animal or an alien mm. A animal. Animal. Okay. Um, do you have any animal choices in mind? Hmm. Are there any limits to what I can choose, or is it just whatever I think of? Something sort of fast to draw. <laughs> Since we have <laughs> limited time. <laughs> I'll go with the cat. Okay. Cats are nice and easy. <laughs> cats, cats are nice and easy. Okay. Um gonna draw I'm gonna be draw a big cat head and is this cat what do you think body type of for this cat mm. normal chubby skinny mm. I kind of like chubby I like chubby too 
<laughs> this is a cat that lives the high life. <laughs> I think it's also maybe it's my upbringing with uh, uh, Garfield. <laughs> mm-hmm. I also just have a very big cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, that's his belly. You can oh. see a little bit more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can. And I'm going to draw like a more cartoony um, mm. cat. I know you draw like excellent cats, Lynn, but I'm going to draw like a really much more cartoony one. Mm. Um, what else am I going to ask? Um, and does this cat have any special features that you can think of? Oh, okay, how about this? Is it a, what kind of, is it a happy cat, sad cat, mad cat? What do you think? I'm thinking a content cat. Oh. I'm thinking a cat that knows how to get meals from multiple people. <laughs> oh. Oh, so, like, so maybe a little smug. Oh yeah. So hold on. <laughs> <laughs> So smug, you said. <laughs> this is the cat whose life mission is to eat, and it has succeeded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it looks like a pretty content cat, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I like those cats that have a little M on their foreheads. No, those are cute. <laughs> like tabby cats. Um, what else? What do you think this mm. cat just ate? Mm. Maybe, or it, it is eating something, huh? Maybe a sandwich. Oh. I'm partially thinking that because whenever my lunches are very lazy, they tend to just be cheese sandwiches, yeah. but my cat adores cheese. And so he goes nuts every time he hears me open the package. Aww. He knows. I think he would enjoy a cheese sandwich, okay. even if he would just only eat the cheese. That's cute. <laughs> like this cat, my cat is very good at getting his way. Mm-hmm. I think most cats are. Yeah. It's how they evolved themselves. Yeah. Most cats get what they want. That's the cat sandwich. <laughs> Gotta make sure it's really big still. Um, Considering I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing, uh, I will also kind of want him to be wearing a shirt. <laughs> I have a thing for animals and shirts. Can mm-hmm. I tell you that? <laughs> it's like, I, I actually want to make a whole series of animals and shirts. That would be adorable. Um, yeah, that's the thing I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to play Animal Crossing a lot. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a Nintendo Switch right now. Mm-hmm. And all of my friends are playing Animal <laughs> Crossing. And it makes me very jealous Yes. <laughs> but that's what got me to cave. Yes. <laughs> I was seeing everyone else being like, oh. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I really want to wear an Animal Crossing shirt. Like mm-hmm. one of the, the animals wear their shirts. I want mm-hmm. one of those shirts. They have some very good clothing. <laughs> yes. Okay. He's got a shirt on. What else? Can it be a shirt with stars on it? <gasps> yes. Because he's a star. Oh, <laughs> That's so cute. He's definitely, uh, yeah, he gets what he wants. He's a star. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> Um, let me give him some cheeks. Anything else we can do with this? I think he should have stripes on his tail. Okay. Oops. 
I both want something on his head and also don't because I, I like the simplicity of it. But I, also, <laughs> I'm also in that same boat. We have similar similar uh, aesthetic mm. choices. I think. How easily could you freehand a baseball cap? Oh, like a little one? I can do a little one. <laughs> that might be a good compromise. He's wearing a little hat. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me practice. Let me do that a little bit better. It's going to be one that sits like above his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, caps are hard to draw. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look like a hat? <laughs> I can see a hat. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yep. <laughs> yep. Nope. Nope. Is that a little better? Doot, doot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it floating with the power of just how good his sandwich is? Yes. <laughs> a magic cat, maybe. Yeah. Aw, I like him. He's cute. I think, uh, oh, it was 2.30. Okay, I think we need to name him real quick. Okay. Hmm. I well, the first thing that popped in my head is Felix, but that's a, that's, uh, that's a very. I was thinking guess. Todd for some yeah. reason. Todd might be the baseball cap. It makes me think of like a kid, and my kid name is like Todd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, cheese sandwich. I'm just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Um, Tubby. Oh. <laughs> Tubby, Tubby the Tabby. Mm -hmm. Tiger also kind of works with oh, the stripes. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Tiger the mildly psychic cat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if he like magic his sandwich in or something too. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, just magically delicious. Mm -hmm. Magic. Star. What about Tubby Todd? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I kind of like Tiger. Yeah, Tiger? personally, because I think I was thinking of him being orange anyway. Yeah, I like it too. Also, just Tiger, the mildly match, the mildly magical cat, <laughs> makes me laugh. Tiger. Because it's such an epic name, and then like every extra layer is just like diminishing it. <laughs> Lively magic cat. Yay! <laughs> Yay! I like him. Yeah, that was I might, fun. I might color him at some point. <laughs> Ooh, I'd love to see it. All right. Actually, I just want to do one show and tell though. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna stop my share real quick um, and I want to show you what I did uh, last week so last week if you if you watch last week's uh, episode we drew a character called Captain Top Shell we did they created a character uh, it was Lynn myself and Kenny mm -hmm. um, and I made a little short story of uh, Captain Tough Shell. Well, it's it more like a little cup. So, this is Captain Tush, uh, Tough Shell, created by Lynn, Kenny, and Debbie. And then this story is by Debbie. So, mm -hmm. arr, <laughs> there's his ship. I am Captain Tough Shell. I am evil. <laughs> he owns it so well. Yes. Let's see. I get slime everywhere. <laughs> the epitome of evil. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I will continue my evil work after I eat my pizza. <laughs> gobble, 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 gobble. That's right. We had a bear on his pirate crew team. Yep, we did. He was part of the crew. That's it. <laughs> that yeah. was my story. You can't do <laughs> evil on an empty stomach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. <laughs> so yeah, everybody out there, if you've uh, created your original characters or if you want to draw a story with our uh, characters that we just made today, mm -hmm. 
please do uh, make your own comic fold up some paper you can even just fold up a regular piece of paper and and staple it um together and then you've got yourself a comic so yay write yeah. your stories everybody yeah. <laughs> yeah it's super easy and if you're not quite sure how to make your own comic we did it in a, both last week and the week previouses um, art streams, which you should be able to find if you go into our blog post where you found this link now. You can also see the previous week's links and you should be able to find the video in there. So if you want a step-by-step -step process on how to make your own one-page comic, go to the website. <laughs> That's right. All right, I'm going to turn it over to you, Lynn. I want to see what uh, you're going to teach us to draw today. Yeah, it should be exciting. So let me go ahead and connect my iPad for you. I need to get the correct meeting number first. That would help. Three, two, one. Yeah, there we go. All right, so kind of similar to what I was just saying. Um, the past couple of weeks, I have been giving a full on lecture talk on how you can learn how to draw anything using reference. And since I've done that for a couple of weeks now, I thought what might be fun is if we go through the process together, but in more of a real time version rather than me talking at you. So obviously I'm using digital art that's mostly for the ease of sharing my screen, but everything we end up doing today is stuff that you should be able to recreate yourself, no problem on whatever materials you have at home. So the first thing we need is something to draw. So Debbie, do you have any suggestions about what we drew today? If there's something you want to learn how to draw better? Uh, I'm kind of interested in that sperm whale. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if that's, is that something you would want to draw? Yeah. No, I am open to anything because this is something that challenges me just as much as ideally teaches people. Right. We just had some questions about how to draw it and it'd be <laughs> those questions good. are good things. Yes. <laughs> so the very first step you want to take when you are learning how to draw anything is to sit yourself down and draw the thing. You will have to forgive the fact that my handwriting is nowhere near as pretty as Debbie's. <laughs> we can read it. <laughs> That's what's important. Yes. <laughs> For some reason, as soon as I try and write things digitally, my handwriting just like degrades. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I think it's because I don't lift my pen up enough. <laughs> so let's try and draw a whale with no reference. So you probably already noticed when Debbie and I were creating our characters and we were kind of waffling back and forth on certain details that a whale may or may not have. Very good questions. And these are questions you want to ask yourself in this very first attempt on how you are going to try and draw something. So for instance, That doesn't seem like the correct eye placement. <laughs> I, I don't know if he has a nose or not. <laughs> oh. There's a lot of things about this that feel wrong. <laughs> it's still very well, like it's still cute. <laughs> yeah, like you, you can tell, but there's a good few details where it's like, I don't think that's how the tail works. I think I didn't quite get the mouth right. I'm not really sure about this fin or even really this body shape. So we have our very first pass at trying to draw a whale. Next up is our first step in trying to gather answers, which is to go into Google or whatever other website of your choice, because what we want to do is we want to find whale pictures. All right, so I'm only going to grab a couple of them today just because I'm working with limited space, but what you want to do is you want to start gathering your reference. 
photos are the ideal of what to grab because it will give you a completely unbiased look at what the thing is. Whereas if you start off with another artist's interpretation, you may end up trying to copy the way they see things rather than going to the original source and trying to figure out how you see things. So I think those three pictures should be enough. For today. And so I can cheat slightly. I'm using digital art. It allows me to do fun tricks like import the photos I saved directly onto the canvas for ease of reference. But if you are not using digital art, you can always, if you have access to it, you can always print your pictures instead and then get another piece of paper and draw directly on top of that. It's okay if you can't completely see the image underneath because now that we have our pictures, I'm gonna put them on one layer. Oops. That was me trying to cheat the Procreate system and forgetting my shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because once we have our picture reference, that was step two. Gather reference, that's probably not readable, that's fine. <laughs> step three is tracing. So, like I was just saying, um, using digital means that I can draw directly on top of the pictures in my program, but it is okay if that's not an option you have at home. If you are able to print out your pictures and get another blank piece of paper, put that on top. It'll give you pretty much the exact same detail you'll need for what I'm doing now. Or alternatively, if you have very steady setup, if you are able to just kind of hold a piece of paper up against the screen that you're working on, that works perfectly fine too because tracing is all about where we start trying to find the answers to the questions we had in our first attempt to draw a whale. So for instance, I'm gonna start with this guy here. The primary things you want to look for when you are tracing over something is you want to look for what shapes you can see in the thing that you are trying to draw. And you want to start getting a sense for what distances are between those shapes to help you better map out the thing's proportions. It has much bigger fins than I thought. Yeah, <laughs> those are far bigger. It's like the eyes around there. And part of why it's very useful to have different pictures is that sometimes something you may have difficulty seeing in one picture, like for instance, this isn't a very good reference of the tail, you may find has a better reference in a different picture. Like this one, you can start actually seeing, oh, that's the shape there. Yeah, those fins are a lot longer mm -hmm. than we were thinking. <laughs> yep. And the body itself is also much more oblong, but we were correct. There's no back fin. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, there is one in the very back, huh? Right there. Kind of, yeah. There's a little bump, but yeah. for our purposes, we can kind of smooth it out. Yeah. Because sometimes you may find that you are having trouble identifying the shapes of the thing that you are drawing. You are looking at it and you're following the lines and you're getting at least a sense of how your hand curves when it's But you just do not see the shapes. So this is part of why it doesn't really matter if you can't see the details of your reference picture underneath what you're tracing on. Because what you can often do as a trick around that is if you take if you just follow the outline and then you take away the reference picture, you may find you have a bit of an easier time locating the shapes that make the thing that you're trying to draw up. So for instance, these whales, it looks like they can be pretty easily divided into thirds with the front half being a very kind of long cone, the center being a little more of a square before it kind of peters back down into a point for where the tail connects. 
in that tail. I did not actually draw <laughs> correctly, but that's okay. That's what our reference practice is all about. Mm -hmm. And so other things you may want to consider while you are tracing over your pictures is sort of marking out what the distance between different features are. So for instance, this line not only shows us head is a bit of a triangle, but it also lines up pretty closely with where our fin would start coming out. Or for instance, we can draw a line straight down that goes through the eye and we can see kind of slightly building on our theme of thirds. The eye is about two thirds down within that triangle -y shape. And so this is a step where you can do it as much or as minimally as you want to. But for our purposes today, we are going to say that is enough tracing. And we are going to move into step number four, which is copying. So now that we have studied our pictures, normally I would do this for longer than approximately five minutes, but I think we got enough info for now. What you want to do is you want to take one of your reference books and then on a blank section of either your page or the screen that you're drawing on, you want to attempt to directly copy it. And so this is where you start taking the information you observed the first time via tracing and you are putting it to practice via freehanding it. So we saw these shapes in our whale friend earlier. So now we are attempting to recreate the whale by drawing those shapes out and the lines and the distances, et cetera. So we're gonna leave these fairly sketchy just again, because we're on a little bit more of a time limit than you would normally yourself. But even with it being a pretty, pretty quick sketch of our whale friend, we're already creating something that has a much stronger sense of being what we wanted to draw in the first place. So I'm gonna erase a few of my guidelines away to leave a little bit of a cleaner image behind. Totally a whale, and Yeah, we're mm -hmm. making a whale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Having a whale of a time. Yeah. <laughs> and for my purposes, I'm leaving out a lot of the internal details uh, for in one part because of time crunch and in of another part of, I tend to spend less time on details in general. So for instance, if we're looking at a whale front here, we could be mapping out like, how did the speckles work? Where do the lines and the wrinkles go? So these are all things that you can jump forth between steps and spend as much or as little time studying as you feel is useful. So as kind of a live example, right now, I feel like what's most useful is just getting the shape of the whale done. And so that's what I am focusing my case study on. All right, and I'm gonna say that that is a pretty sketchy, but quick, but still fairly solid recreation of our whale friend here. And so similar to being a step that you can do as many times or as little times as you want. And for both of them, it is most useful, uh, especially if you really want an in-depth study of what you're drawing, to do this with as many different types of pictures as you can find with the thing you're trying to draw presenting itself at different angles and like different poses and things. Because once we feel we have a solid ability to recreate the pictures of the thing that we're trying to draw when we're just looking at it and doing it on our own, 
That leaves us with the last and final step, which is step number five, referencing. Hopefully I spelled that right. <laughs> you did. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so what exactly is referencing? Referencing is essentially the ability to be able to take any picture that you have to be able to read out the basic information of the thing you're trying to draw in terms of like what shapes it's made up of, what the distance between things are, and then being able to take that information and transform it into whatever picture you yourself are attempting to create. So for instance, let's say that our internet has died. These are the only three pictures of a whale that we have managed to save. But what we really want to do is to draw a whale jumping out of the water. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to look at our picture and say, okay, I can see that the head is basically this kind of cone shape. I middle of the body is basically a kind of square before things start tapering back down into a point where it is met with the tail. And I can see based on how I've mapped out these different sections of the body that the fin would go right at about where we sort of shift between our first two shapes. I can see that the mouth kind of follows along there. I can see the eye would be roughly within the last third of the head. And you continue down taking the information that you were able to see in your picture and you are then able to transform it into whatever cool new pose you want the thing to be doing, even if that isn't necessarily what you were able to see within your original reference picture. And so this is once again a thing, the more things you were able to do this case study with, the more useful it is. For instance, if I had more pictures that showed a whale at this sort of angle, the easier time I'd be able to be like, the only reference picture right now I have is this one, but I remember when I was doing my tracing copying of this picture of it showing its belly off that this is where certain lines are that you aren't able to see when it's like this. But in effect, that is fundamentally the process of how you can teach yourself how to draw anything. And you may find yourself where you get to a point where you have gone through all these steps and you're drawing the thing and you're looking and you're still like, mm, I can see that I'm doing things not 100% correctly. I can tell that there's something kind of off about the head shape that I've done, or I can tell that the fins do not, they should not be lining up like that. But the ability to recognize your own mistakes is actually a good thing because it means that you have successfully trained your eye to be able to look at something and find the solutions for what you've drawn. And being able to find those solutions means that you have successfully learned how to draw the thing. And one of the reasons why it can be a good time to have your first pass something or actually looking at anything is that then when you go back to it to like your very first version of the whale even if your current whales you can still see room for improvement odds are you have come very far from where you first began and that is something i think is worth celebrating. Absolutely. All right, we got about 
five more minutes before we will be passing things over to Ricardo. So Debbie, do you have any extra final thoughts? No, not really. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see all the, you know, like all, you know, how observation really helps with, mm -hmm. you know, making something that you're trying to, you know, the drawing that you're trying to do. It's just, uh, you know, we're lucky we have Google. <laughs> yes, so it does help yeah. a great deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'll use Google to like, um, look for drawing. So like, for example, mm. a whale drawing, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll look at that just as a, another tool for myself. Mm -hmm. As yeah, yeah. Like when you're first trying to learn how to draw something, I argue it's most useful to try and, depending on what it is, but if you can, to go for photographs first. Right. But there is an absolute value in sort of seeing how other people interpret the thing that you're trying to draw. Because for instance, our very first attempt up here is probably based on how we've seen other people kind of cartoonify whales like you get that sense of they often greatly exaggerate the front of the body before it just sort of wheedles down to where the tail is and when you're able to sort of cross-reference that with the actual images of the thing you're trying to draw you can start to see Okay, so they started with this big version, like with this real version of a whale, and then they chose to, instead of having the head be like a pointy triangle, they started to round it out, but they still kept like the basic proportions of a whale so that we could still identify it as a whale and so on. So yeah, it's a really interesting process for comparing and contrasting how other people will cartoonify something and like what steps they take in order to achieve the image that they want it to be like do they want it to be scarier and therefore they made it like much pointier or like sharper angles or did they want it to be cute and friendly and they rounded all the edges out right because even when you're looking at the same reference picture two different people will often be able to walk away with very different interpretations of what they saw within its basic foundation and i think that's really cool i think it's very fun seeing like I chose to interpret the head as a bit of a triangle, but you may be more interested in reading it as like one giant oval kind of thing. And that changes the way you draw it. And yet we're still most likely fundamentally able to then see it as a whale. I'm gonna make this a top down shot. <laughs> if you can even tell. <laughs> My whales are getting increasingly sketchy as I run out of space. <laughs> <laughs> all right and that is in kind of real time how to draw anything and i think the fact that we're able to do it in real time also demonstrates this is really something you can do as much or as little as you want to like the more time you put in the more detailed results you'll start to be able to recreate but even in half an hour we went from this guy to this guy. Yeah. And that in and of itself is already a pretty solid improvement. I'd say so. All right. And I think that puts us officially at the end of our half hour. So thank you everyone so much for joining us. I hope you had a good time. I hope you were able to draw something. I certainly had fun. So did I. <laughs> yeah. I always like doing this with you, Debbie. Bit of fun. Yeah. All right, and so joining us in either immediately after us or within about a minute or so, we're going to be having Ricardo, where we where he will be hosting Open Labs. And if I recall correctly, today's topic is going to be about collision and how you can start setting up scientific experiments at home that can help you study this real-life, cool scientific phenomenon. Fun. 
So let me go ahead and disconnect my iPad so that we can say thank you all so much for joining us. We will also be back tomorrow at four o'clock for one more drawing program. And in the meantime, we're going to be handing things off to Ricardo. Thank you, so everyone. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Cool. Got my whole setup here, and I think we're ready to go. All right. So, hey, everybody. My name is Ricardo, but you can call me Mr. R. I'm the Communities Program Specialist for the San Mateo County Libraries. And I want to invite you to Open Labs, where everybody is welcome to explore, experiment, and experience all types of sciences. So come along and let's explore together at home. Okay, and before we start, please smash that like button and subscribe so they can follow us through and see all the new content we're going to be adding. All right, that's a sneak peek. Okay, so for today's experiment, we're going to be doing another physics experiment because it's, it's super fun to do. We did one last week and that was amazing to do. But today, we're, we're going to be doing a physics experiment that involves, guess what it involves? It's a strange combination. It involves an egg, see that? And a potato chip. I don't know if you can see it, it's a little bright, but it's a potato chip. A weird combination, but I promise it's going to be fun because we're going to be learning about collision. Can you say that with me? Collision. Now, collisions happen every day. We experience it every day, a hundred times a day. What do you mean? Well, if you do this, that's a collision. You clapped your hands and it made a sound. That's energy. If I were to drop this tape onto my table here, that's a collision. So now you know what a collision is, but there's more to learn. But before we begin, you already know, we have to do an opening activity, a brain energizer. I don't know what you wanna call it or our daily exercise, but we're gonna do a fun game right now. Now, every time I do this opening activity, I don't know if you've noticed, I always try to put in some, some scientific knowledge that we can learn of. And today we're gonna be exercising our, our left hemisphere and our right hemisphere, okay? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna be playing a game called the mirror game. And it's simple, it's pretty simple. Basically, you're going to be mirroring my movements. So if I have my right hand up, you are going to put your left hand up, okay? If I put my left hand up, you're going to put your right hand up. If I'm looking down, my whole body's looking down, you are looking where? Up, okay? So that's something we're going to do right now. And if I'm moving to the right side, you're going to move to the left side. So you kind of get it, all right? And we're gonna go slow, medium, and then we're gonna go super fast. And it's kind of, you. it may help you that the way I have my screen, you can, you can already see how this is gonna go. It's gonna be pretty fun. Okay, so we're gonna start with the easy round. I'm gonna go very slow, and then we're gonna go, we're gonna pick it up a notch, okay? So are you ready? Let's do this. So copy my movements or not, mirror them, okay? Right hand up. That means your hand is, that means you have your left hand up, okay? Get it? So left. Right, left. Now let me pause. If I have my left hand up, your hand should be the right hand. Okay, let's continue again. 
right? And I'm saying the words right hand to confuse you. That's that's the part of your brain. Is their brain is trying to understand why is he saying right, but I'm doing the opposite of pain. Okay, so right hand, left hand, looking down, looking up, turning my body to the left side, turning my body to the right side. Okay, so that was, we were doing it slow there. I was sort of trying to get you to get comfortable with that. Now we're going to up it up a notch, let's go and increase it to medium level. So you're ready for this? Let's see, let's see if you're ready. Okay, left, right, down, up, right, left. Now, believe it or not, I kind of got this idea by playing this uh, video game. And in the video game, it pretty much asked you to look at the direction that um, was showing on the screen. So if you saw a left arrow, you would look at the left side. But the way I did this differently was that we we're going to mirror each other. And that way it's a little bit more challenging and your brain is like, whoa, wait, wait, I gotta pay attention, okay? So we're gonna go a little bit faster. Let's see if you can catch up. I know you can. We've done these activities before and I know you're gonna get it. I believe in you, okay? I'm gonna go fast, rapido, fast, okay? Let's do this. Left, right, left, right, down, up, right, left, down, up, ah. There you go. Now, next time, I'm gonna do this game a little bit differently and we're gonna see how you do, okay? I think my brain is activated. I think my left hemisphere and my right hemisphere is good to go. Now, here's an interesting fact, because you know I have that knowledge right there. When we were doing these movements, your left hemisphere actually controls all the right side of your body and your right hemisphere controls what you do on your left side. It's pretty strange. Continue on exploring, investigate that topic with your families, do the research, go for it. It's really interesting um, what you can learn by learning about your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere of your brain. Okay, so let's begin. So today we're going to be doing an experiment I like to call the Fluffy Guardians. And believe it or not, I've never done this experiment before with any of my students. This is brand new content. So we're going to be learning together, but rest assured, it's pretty fun. So basically, in our fluffy guardian experiment, we're going to be building two baskets. And one of the baskets is going to contain our egg. And the second basket, it's going to contain our potato chip. Now, if you don't have any of these, or if you have one of these, do not worry. You can still do this experiment. Maybe use something that's soft. Doesn't have to be this. You can even use paper. You can use whatever you have in your home that's soft and may crumple or may crush easily. Okay, you don't have to use these if you don't have them. Okay? So I'm gonna set these aside over here. Now, also, if you noticed, I forgot to mention this, we have a hard shell here. No shell at all, it's pretty light, but they're both pretty fragile, meaning they can easily break. And so the goal here is, we gotta make sure we build these baskets that are strong enough and can protect our egg and potato chip from breaking or crushing, okay? That's the challenge. Now, this wouldn't be a physics experiment if we didn't do three tests. Yeah, same thing as we did last week, but we're gonna be doing it a little bit differently. So the first test we're going to be doing is the gravity test, and I'm sure you know what that means. Basically, we're going to be dropping our little, let's pretend this is my basket. We're gonna be dropping our basket that has the potato chip or the egg at three different levels of height. Okay, 
we're just gonna drop it. And we're going to see if it survives, okay? The second test is the weight test. And all that means is we're gonna have our basket and we're gonna put something very heavy on it. This is super heavy. And we're going to leave it like this, okay? And we're going to see if our basket can protect our egg and potato chip, okay? So that's the weight test. And the last and final test, this is gonna be really fun. Adult parents, I need you to listen to this, okay? The last test is called the force test. We haven't done this test before, but we're going to do it today. So basically, you are going to grab your basket and you're going to throw it with all your force on the floor. Now hold up, wait a minute, I see the eyebrows, I see them, hold up, I'm not done yet. So parents, adults, kids, you need permission from your adults and, per, uh, and, and your parents to do the last test, to do the force test, okay? You wanna make sure they're there to help you out. Now you could do this or you can have your adults do this if you don't wanna throw it, it's perfectly fine. Um, just make sure parents and adults, you designate, remember last week we designated a splash zone? This week, today, you wanna designate um, a collision zone where you don't mind, let's say, cause let's, let's be honest, it may break, we don't know. Hopefully not, I know you're incredible, engineers, and I know it's not going to break, but if it does, just in case, make sure where, wherever you throw it, you don't mind it getting spilled. I'm not talking about the egg yolk, okay? This stuff inside here. So make sure you get approval from your parents and adults before doing the last and final test, okay? Now, the materials we're going to need to do all these really cool stuff, because we're building two baskets. So when I do the demo of how to do it, it's gonna take a little bit longer because I'm building two baskets. Now you're going to need, you definitely need some tape, but if you don't have tape, a good substitution is rubber bands or string that you can tie. But we have tape here. We have some cups, could be styrofoam, could be paper cups, could be plastic cups. Um, if you have, maybe old water bottles you recycled. Take those out, tell your parents, hey, we need those, let's reuse them. You can do that. We also have paper. We have sticks, you can use sticks if you have them. And let's not forget about the scissors. You need these as well. And you're free to use anything you have in your home, of course, with adult parent supervision, because last week, I don't know if you, whoever tuned in, I ran out of alu aluminum foil paper. You see that? I ran out. I was having too much fun with this. And now I owe my mom one. I haven't, I told her about it. She told me to get some more. So make sure you get approval. You don't want to use the last one. Okay? Nice. And remember, in this program in open labs, we always want to reduce and reuse. So if you did a ship last week, which is what we did, and you still have it and you wanna repurpose it, meaning you wanna add that to our basket and combine it together, go for it. Those are bonus points for you, okay? Now, it looks like I'm gonna give you about three to five minutes to get your materials, to gather all that you need. You can use this time for a bathroom break, you can use this time for a snack time. And if you're already starting because you're just like, after he says the test, I know that I've been doing this every week. After he does the test, I'm going to start. If you already started, that is perfectly fine. Keep going. This is going to take some time to do. Okay, maybe an hour to do, but we only have 30 minutes. So it's a fine. Just go for it. Okay. But for everybody else, gather your materials really quick. I'm going to be talking about three new plants and how to take care of them in the meantime, okay? So 
let's see what kind of plants I have. Like I said, I live in a jungle. I have about 500 plants in my room, about a thousand in my two greenhouses that I have. So it takes about a day to water them all. So I'm gonna show you some of them that I have now. Which one's a good one? Okay, this one's a good one right here. Yeah, look at this one. This one is called the Alocasia Dwarf Poly. You see that? So to, a thing to note about Alocasias is that they, they like to they love to be wet. They're bulbs, meaning that they're eventually gonna die once spring is over, but they grow back again. I know, these are amazing. So if all the leaves come off, on your plant and it's an alocasia, do not throw it away. Just actually just leave it outside and you're gonna find out it's gonna grow again. You wanna water them, you, you can water this once a week. Doesn't need much light. Okay, so that's the alocasia poly. Great. I'm gonna show you my second plant. Let's see. What is a good one? Oh yeah, this one's gonna be a good one right here. Look at this. What is that? This is the Peperomia Rosso. And it's a pretty easy plant to take care of. It doesn't require much attention. Honestly, it likes bright light. So if you put it next to a window, it should be fine. As long as it's not a really hot day, it's gonna get burned. But besides that, it's really easy to take care of. And also, you wanna water this once a month. It doesn't like to be wet. So once a month watering for the Peperomia Rosso. Okay, so that's the second plant. So I'm gonna put them right here. The third plant, ooh, since we're already doing small plants. What's a good one? Oh yeah, I think, yeah, let's show you this one. So this is the coffee plant. Yeah, coffee. There you go, now you know how it's made. The coffee plant. Usually they're much bigger than this. I actually do have one in my room, but it's really hidden. I don't wanna take it out. Maybe next week, I'll show you it. I'll put it, actually, I'll put it right behind me. So this coffee plant, it's easy and it grows super quick and it likes to be watered once a week and it loves light. So if you have a coffee plant, Make sure it has a lot of light and you're watering once a week. Okay, so the coffee plant, the alocasia poly, and we got the peperomia rosso. I love these peperomias. They're just so cool to look at. Okay, and I think, I think we have gathered all our materials. If you're ready to go, because I'm ready to go, please give me a like down here on YouTube. Give me that like so I know that you're ready to go and we can start building this thing together, okay? Give me some more likes. I need some more likes. I gotta continue because I can't see you. I don't know if you're ready, but you're probably ready. So we're gonna start right now. So I'm going to start building. We can build together. You can um, do what you like. Remember, your imagination reaches beyond anything in this universe. You have so much creativity. Use your brain. That's your brain right now has so many connections forming. It's amazing. It's your brain is going to grow super fast. All the connections, not physically, but you know, the connections. So let's see. I am going to use three cups that I have here. I hope you can, yeah, you can see them. Three styrofoam cups. I'm going to build my egg basket first. Okay. And then I'm going to do the potato chip. So I'm going to use some tape, I'm going to wrap it around. I love this tape. I am not going to lie to you. I love this tape. Um, I use it for all my experiments, all the craft ideas I have. This tape is just easier to use. I mean, you can use duct tape, but I recommend uh, a, lighter, a lighter type of tape for kids. Um, it's just easier to you know, take off and put back. 
So I got to make sure they're secure. Do you see that? They look pretty secure. But I don't want I don't want them too close to each other. I just want enough space to put the egg in here. You see that opening? Yeah. I'm gonna put one more, and then I'm gonna flip it. Okay, there you go. Flipping it. I'm gonna put this one here. Now remember, it's also nice to connect the tape there too. That's just a tip that I'm going to give to you. I never give hints or tips when I do my experiments with my students because I really want them to sort of think about it. I gave you one tip. It's not gonna happen again. So let's do it one more time. Okay, there you go. Now I'm ready to put the egg in here. But before I put it in here, I'm going to use one piece of tissue paper. Use one piece, just one piece of tissue paper. I'm just gonna put it in here. Look at that. And I'm gonna put my egg in there. Okay, there you go. My egg is in there. Okie doke. And then I'm gonna use some of the this packing paper that I have. And I'm gonna put it on top of my egg. Like so, okay? Like that. Going to secure it. Let's see. Ooh. But let's make sure we add some sticks to this. And you'll find out why I'm using the sticks. Just gonna put the sticks in here, right there. And I'm gonna put another one in the back. See that? Okay, perfect. And then one more for precaution. All the way at the back side. I can make it in there. There you go. Perfect. So this is my basket for the egg. And let me do one for the chip really quick. I'm gonna use one of my styrofoam cups. And I'm gonna use this brown paper bag. I'm gonna add it in here. I'm gonna put it inside my cup. I'm probably gonna put, oh, now the chip is a little bit more difficult because it could break very, very easily. I'm just gonna put it in there. We're gonna see what happens. I've never done this before. I'm gonna close it like this. Ooh, and then I'm gonna add the tape. Because you know the tape is amazing. Okay, that's good enough. We have the potato chip in here. We have my egg in here. Okay. Now I want to go over really, really quickly because we got, I think, eight minutes left. Three concepts because we always want to learn here. The first one is collision. I already talked about it, but what's the definition? So collision just means when you have two objects and they collide. They bump against each other. You see that? For instance, when you have a baseball bat and you're swinging and you hit your ball, that's called a collision. What's happening is the energy is being transferred from the bat to the ball and that makes it fly, okay? If I had time, I would do it. Why not? I'm just gonna do it. Boom, that was too fast. I'm not gonna do it again because it almost hit my computer. I think it did. <laughs> so that's collision. Now there's two types of collisions. There's elastic collision and inelastic collision. So what does that mean? Let me see if I can get one more. There we go. Yeah, this right here. We'll use this. So elastic collision, all that means is when you bump two objects together and they bounce away. I don't know if you ever had two bouncy balls and you threw them at each other and they just boom, they bounce away like that. That's called elastic collision. The energy being transferred is the same energy 
going this way. So you have energy going here and the energy is being outputted over here. Now, the second one is inelastic collision. And all that means is the same kind of definition. You have two objects that bump or collide, but they, they stop moving. For instance, we have this. You see that? Only one of them was moving, but this one stayed the same. It wasn't too much energy being transferred. And they use this for bumper cars for a good, good reason. Because when you're in a bumper car, you know, you're supposed to bump each other, but the bumpers help absorb that energy. So you don't, so when you, when you bump each other, you just stop. You don't bump too hard. That's why you have the seatbelt. And the seatbelt is very important because of whiplash. And that's because of collision. The energy is being transferred. So always wear those seat belts, all right? So I think we're ready to do our testing. So we're gonna do our test because I have two things to test and we have five minutes left. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Whew, kind of scared. I should have put something here, but that's, that's fine. Actually, you know what? I may have some paper lying around. Let's see. Boom. How did that happen? I don't know. There you go, paper. That's all you need. So this is what we're gonna do, the first test, the gravity test. We're gonna drop both, okay? Both. Ooh. So in this one, I put the sticks here so it can help protect the landing and the egg. I don't feel anything wet. The egg is still okay. Yes, it's still okay. And my potato chip, we're gonna open it because I, I cannot tell if it survived that fall. What do you think? Give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or you know, who knows? In great condition. Okay, we're gonna put it back in there. Now you're probably thinking you should have done it higher. Yeah, you, I, I should do it higher. You can do it higher, okay? So we can always do it higher because it will affect how well your basket is, okay? So the egg is okay, the potato chip is okay. We're gonna do the weight test really quickly. I'm going to put my Boston fern on top of this. Look at that, I'm gonna, it's really heavy. So I'm gonna drop it, three, two, one. Oh, okay, look, look, it squeezed it. Uh-oh, and let's do this one. Three, two, one. Okay. Okay, the potato chip, I am not sure. We're gonna find out. Let's see, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, potato chip is good. And I believe the egg is in great conditions. Oh yeah, the egg is doing fine. Boom. Okay, now the last test. And this is the force test. Now remember, please, please, please ask permission from an adult or your parents to either have them do this for you or to let them do it for you, but they have to let you have an area where you can throw your experiment, okay? I'm gonna do it here. I'm just gonna drop it really hard here. So you may hear a loud sound, okay? And this one as well, I'm just gonna try it really hard. Uh, please survive. Three, give me a three, two, one, boom. One more time. And one more time. Do you see how it just bounced? Okay, now the egg. Ready? One, three, two, one. Three, two, one. One more time. Three, two, and one. Okay, I'm scared. Let's see really quickly. Egg is, I mean, the potato chip is fine. I really want the egg to be fine. That's why I'm saying it. And the egg is fine. Look at that. Well, thank you everybody for joining us here at Open Labs. If you wanna continue to explore, please sign up. 
for a library card. Look at this. A library card online. There you go. To access all our resources, and this includes ebooks, tutors in English and Spanish and Help Now, and using elementary and middle school databases. And remember, we still have the census going on, and we want everybody to be counted because we all matter. Okay? Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. As you can see, my egg and my potato chip have survived the collision. Until next, until next time, take care, everybody. Peace out. Peace out.